but as an unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. You act like babes in Christ. You act like you're, you're carnal. N notice what he said. Read on. I have fed you with milk. I and feed, I'm feeding you with milk. And not with meat. And not with meat, because you'll get choked on the meat by now, because you're still carnal. You haven't grown up yet. For, Come on. He, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, mm -hmm. neither yet now are ye able. Mm -hmm. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions. If are there's ye envy, and strife, strife, and division, mm -hmm. are ye not carnal? That's carnality. And walk as men. And walk as who? Men. And walk as who? Men. Men. So there's a difference between men of this world and sons of God. You see he's making a distinction there? Glory to God. Either you are, uh, uh, either you are uh, born of Adam or you're born of God. And let me say this to you. You don't get born of God just because the preachers say you're born. You don't get born of God because you shake hands with the preacher and say some prayer. That's not how you get born of God. Uh, come on, some. There are a lot of people that really believe that they are all right with God. Hello. Let me tell you something. You know, you know what's really dangerous? You know what's dangerous? When you have lived all your life thinking that you are all right with God, and then God sets you in an environment to hear his truth that lets you know what he requires to be in right standing with him. Come on. And then, but you, but you hold on to your position that you are right, so you turn a deaf ear to what God is really saying. Come on, somebody. That's a dangerous thing. It's a good thing when, glory to God, our pride, when we can let go of our pride and hear God. Come on, somebody. When we can hear God, because God, if, if you, the mere fact, let me tell you something. Let me just say what the Holy Ghost say. If you sitting in this room tonight, it's because God got something to say to you. Come on, somebody. Come on. Because number one, God, no, I'm not, I'm not no hyped up preacher. I'm not here to play no games with folk. Glory to God, I don't have time for that. Glory to God, God knows that I'm going to open my mouth and say whatever it is he say. So if you came through that door tonight, it's because God drew you here. It was because God saw to it that you get here. And because God want to say something to you. So my advice to you tonight is lay aside your pride and try to hear what thus saith the Lord. Come on, somebody. So, come on. You know, I was preaching like this once. Glory to God in, in Hollywood. I was preaching like, like this in Hollywood. Uh, Hollywood, Florida. Glory to God. And a guy was sitting right here on the front row with his wife and his little baby. And I was preaching, and I said, God is trying to talk to you. God is trying to, and then, and then God got specific, Bishop. I walked up to that young man, and I said, God trying to talk to you. You the one God really trying to talk to tonight, in addition to everybody else. But he really is targeting you. Glory to God, you need to give your heart to God now, because you may not get another chance. And that young man wouldn't budge. Glory to God, he rose up in pride. And I could see the pride rising up in him. Glory to God. And you know what happened? He got up from the church that it was on Sunday morning. He got up from the church that Sunday morning, that Sunday night. Somebody knocked on his door. He went and opened the door, and the man shot him in the face. Killed him right there on the spot. That was the last time God was trying to talk to him. He didn't get a chance to hear God anymore. And that man went straight into hell, refusing to hear God. God never destroys anything without a warning. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I say God doesn't destroy anything without a warning. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something. Glory to God. I don't know why God got me here, but he got me here right now. I don't know why he's telling me to say this, but he's telling me to say this. Glory to God. We've been called some of everything. I 
I've been called some of everything. I've been called a witch. I've been called a sorcerer. I've the BT been called a cult. Glory to God, we've been called some of everything. But one thing I do know, God Almighty talk to Bible teachers. One thing I do know, God is working with this ministry. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. And if you really want to know God, you're in the right place. You're in the right place if you really want to know him. I don't care. Glory to God. I don't care what you've been in, how long you've been in it. Glory to God. If God brought you through the door tonight, it's because he want to tell you, let it go. Empty out yourself and listen to what God got to say. Come on and shout glory, somebody. Kabasata. Hayabasata. Hadabasata. A lot of folks, I've seen a lot of hands come up against Bible teachers international. Glory to God, but I have never seen a weapon formed against us that prospered. Come on, somebody. I ain't seen it prosper yet. Because many times when people think they're coming up against Mary Banks, they don't realize this ain't my thing. Glory to God. Bible teachers is God's influence in the earth. This belongs to God. There's no way I am not smart enough to preach what I preach. Don't you know when I open my mouth, it is the Heavenly Father that is speaking directly to all of us. Not just you, but to me too. Come on and shout glory, somebody. I've been to school, but I ain't that smart. I ain't smart enough to change a man's life. I ain't smart enough to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I'm not smart enough to turn your life around, make, give you a 180 degree turnaround. I'm not smart enough to, for you to wake up one day and don't even want the things you used to be crazy about. No, that don't come from being smart. That come from somebody hearing from God. That come from somebody somebody's heart being open to hear what God is saying. Glory to God, I'm here to tell you, you ain't all right with God. I'm here to tell you that glory to God, amen, God came to condemn what we did outside of the faith. Everything, everything that we were doing before we got saved, everything you're doing now that you don't know God, God condemned it and it will send you to hell. If I walk away from this truth, I'm going to hell. I say, if I walk away from it, I'm going to hell. Are y'all hearing God? God trying to save somebody. God trying to save somebody from themselves. Sometimes we need saving from our own self. Sometimes we, we, we can, you know, glory to God, we can be so smart. I was, I kind of, I, you know, I used to pat myself on the back. You know, I was intellectual. Glory to God, I was educated. Glory to God, you know you can be an educated fool. I was educated in the things of the world, but glory to God, I didn't know nothing about God. I thought I knew about God. Hallelujah. I thought I knew about him until the day I met him. Then I, didn't, I realized something. See, anybody that, anybody that met the Lord got the same testimony. Glory to God, the day you met him, you found out something. You found out that there's two worlds. Hallelujah. There's a world of light and there's a world of darkness. And we didn't know that we were walking in the darkness until we got in the light. Come on and shout glory, somebody. This gospel ain't no fan club. This gospel is life. This ain't some club that we done joined, glory to God, and we got some, some leaders that we kind of like. No, 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 no. This gospel is life. It's life. It changes a life. And some of us, some of us, some of you, some, some of you have been, have, God has visited you. Let me tell you how he visited you. You say, well, I ain't never got a visitation from God. Yeah, you did. God changed some of your loved ones. Glory to God, they were right in the house with you. 
You don't hardly know them anymore because they're different. They're totally different than the way they used to be. Glory to God. How did they get like that? Oh, you think they follow Mary Banks? You think they follow Mary Banks? Glory to God. I can go to China. I can go to Timbuktu, and they still going to be the same. Why? Because they follow Jesus. Why? Because they done, they done found something that's greater than you, that's greater than me, that's greater than anything in this world. And you know what? They ain't going to let it go. Come on, somebody. Something, when you grab a hold of Jesus, uh, glory to God, I don't care what you're going through. You don't want to let him go because there's nothing like him. Come on, somebody. There's nothing like Jesus. Uh, there ain't no thrill like Jesus. Come on, somebody. God trying to save somebody. God trying to save somebody. Sometimes we got to be saved from our own intellect. Sometimes we know too much. I had to become a fool. I had to become ignorant, knowing nothing to receive God. Hallelujah. Like, Nicodem like uh, God, Jesus said to Zacharias, glory to God, Jesus passing by, glory to God, and Zacharias, a little short man, had to climb up in the tree. And when Jesus got there, he said, come on down, Zach. You're a little bit too high. God saying that to somebody tonight. Come on down. You're a little bit too high. Come on, somebody. I say, God saying, come on down. Get off your high horse and come on down and let me talk to you. Because you're a little bit too high. Come on, somebody. You don't know if God's going to tell you again. You don't know if he's going to draw you. You don't know if he's going to talk to you. While the grace of God is passing by, you ought to grab a hold of it. Say in your heart. This is the prayer you need to pray. Say, Lord, I don't even like that lady. I don't even like her. But if what she's saying is true, show me. I don't like her. But God, if, if my soul is in jeopardy, then show it to me. If my soul ain't right with you, show me. Come on, somebody. X out Mary Banks. I don't like her. I don't like the way she preach. Don't like the way she look. I don't like nothing about her. But if she telling the truth, show it to me. Now that's fair. That's fair, isn't it? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Get mad, but get saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Cool off and get saved. Hallelujah. Now, what my lesson? Uh, who? No, no humanity? Okay. There's no. Okay. Let's get back to the lesson now. Praise you, Jesus. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Good God Almighty. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You see, see when we act like this, they think really this I don't know about all about all of that. All that shaking and, and wiggling and stuff. What is that? Well, it's even the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is quickening my mortal body. That's what's happening. Hiya basa. Glory to God. Glory to God. And yet sometimes I stopped holding it. Sometimes I stopped suppressing it. Sometimes I just let it have its way. Come on, somebody. I just let it. Good God Almighty. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. I heard the old folks say, glory to God, I wouldn't serve a God that I couldn't feel sometime. Come on, somebody. Woo, Jesus. And what's that word? What's that? What's that she's saying? What is all that stuff? I don't understand all of that. 
Well, I don't understand Patwa. <laughs> Glory to God. You understand? <laughs> Patwa sounds like another tongue to me. <laughs> Praise <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Here are the us. Here are the Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless you. He come on now, not us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That ain't nothing but a language unto God. When you hear that, amen, I'm just praising him in another tongue. Another tongue, a, a tongue that only he can interpret. Come on, somebody. Hmm. Hmm. Get yourself together here. Jesus. Get, down, man. Get yourself together, girl. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Holy Ghost. See the Holy Ghost in here. It's hot. Yeah. It's getting thick in here tonight. I say it's getting thick in here. The Holy Ghost is in here. And when the Holy Ghost come, he come for a purpose. If you want him, just reach out. And he'll save you right now. Right where you are. Just reach out to him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, Mary Bain. Pull it together. Pull it together. You can do it. Pull it together now. Get yourself together. Yes. <clears throat> Bless the Lord. There's no humanity in salvation. Once that soul is connected to God, he's a new creature. He's not human anymore. Are y'all hearing God? Are you hearing God? Amen. So now, I want you to preserve this. Say to yourself, say it until you get it in your spirit. My soul is a new creature. My soul is a new creature. Come on, say, I am, I am. a new creature. I am, I am a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is a... And what is in Christ? What was put in Christ? The soul. My soul was placed in Christ. So I'm a what? New creature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we ready to go skin diving? Are we ready to go skin diving? All right. Let's look at this. Let's see if we can demonstrate this tonight. Let's look at um, on page 15 in your book, and uh, the scripture is going to come out of St. John 17. In fact, let's start on start on uh, page uh, 14, the beginning of this chapter here, uh, St. John 17 and 20. And we got to move along now. Amen. Neither pray I for these alone. Now this is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's just. Be this is just before the crucifixion. He's praying. Mm -hmm. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Okay, I'm not only praying for the disciples that you gave me, the apostles, but I'm praying for those who will believe on me through their word. 
See, the, the Bible says in Acts, the second chapter, 42nd verse, it says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Come on, are you hearing God? Because it was the apostles that Jesus gave the revelation to of the church, of, of himself. Is that right? Amen. So the message that I'm preaching today, I'm preaching, I'm preaching the same thing that the apostles preached. Peter preached it. John preached it. Paul preached it. Are y'all hearing me? These fellows preached the same gospel. And we're believing on Jesus because of what they preached. Is that right? All right. Praise the Lord. Read on. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me. Now he's praying for us. That we might be one. And, and now he tells us how. You see that semicolon there? It means I'm going to partially explain as what it means to be one. As thou, Father, art in me. Just like you in me. And I in thee. And just like I am in you. That they also may be one in us. They also may be one in us. I want them to be one the same way. The same way you made me one with you, I want you to make them one with us. Exactly the same way. And he said how? He said how? He said, just like you're in me, just like I'm in you, you're in me. So Jesus standing there, and someone says, show us the Father. The Father spoke and said, have I been so long with you and you don't know me, Philip? Amen. So what was that? That was the Father in that flesh. Is that right? That was God living in that tabernacle. Are you, are you working with me? Glory to God. That was God living in that tabernacle. And I'll tell you another time when God spoke, when God spoke, through Jesus, through that body called Jesus, was when Jesus entered into Jerusalem. And they were chiding with him. And Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, he said, you destroy this temple, and I'll raise it up in three days. That was the father. You know how I know? Because the Bible say God raised him from the dead. Come on, somebody. Amen. So Jesus... They, was, they were looking at that body called Jesus, but God was speaking through that body. So he said, just like you're in me, speaking through me, I want them to be in us. Y'all don't hear me. He said, I'm in you and you're in me. I want the, I want the same thing to happen with them. I want, you to, I want us to be in them and they in us. Come on, are you hearing God? And how is all of that's going to be done? By the Holy Ghost. All right. Are you hearing God? It's going to be done by the Holy Ghost. All right. Let's look at this. He says now, make them one, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. I so I said, now, Lord, okay. I understand. I, I, I thought, okay. This, 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 this means that if we live holy, the world will know that God sent Jesus. Well, that makes sense. Amen. But he, he didn't leave it up to our discretion only. Um, give me a male portrait. Give me a couple of male portraits up here. Three, you guys, three of you, all, all three of you, I need you. Praise you, Jesus. All right, two pastors and an evangelist. That's, that's, that's good. All right. Now, I'm going to try to do this. I, praise the Lord. Let's see which is which. Hallelujah. That looks like Jesus. Is that the right side? Who wants to be Jesus? <laughs> 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 I 
right, Jesus. And give me, um, I need a little bit bigger guy for this. Well, my man I had last night, oh, Jesus, hallelujah, <laughs> glory to God. No, 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 no. <laughs> Pastor Nigel. Yeah. Well, you got to be the body. Where's, where's, where's Mr. Daniel? He hiding? Thank you, brother. <laughs> Come on and play your part, brother. <laughs> We're the body. We try to make these so, so you can remember what we're doing here, okay? So this is the body. And soul spirit. Who wants to be soul spirit? Okay. So where you belong? In the body, right? And Holy Ghost. Oh. Since there's nobody else, you'll take it, right? I'm sure. <laughs> okay. That's the Holy Ghost. All right. All right. You can sit down, Jesus, right here. You can sit down, Mr. Holy Ghost. Okay. Now, let's look at this. And let's look at it from the scriptures. Let's look at the 23rd verse of the 17th chapter. Oh, uh, wait a minute, 22nd verse. 22nd verse, St. John 17, 22. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Okay, now, the glory that God gave Jesus, he says, I've given them the same glory. When you read this, make a notation that the glory that God gave the man Jesus was the Holy Ghost. That's the glory he gave him. Are you hearing that's all Jesus had to work with when he was here, it was the Holy Ghost. Are you, are, are you following me? Amen. Now, I want you to see something here. I want you to see this. Amen. He says, the glory that you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. In other words, it is the Holy Ghost that makes us one. Once we get placed in the spirit, that's when we are one, right? Okay. I want you to, I want you to, yeah, here we are. Read the 23rd verse. I in them, mm -hmm. and thou in me, mm -hmm. that they may be made perfect in one. Okay, now this is what Jesus is saying. Excuse me, body. Jesus, come. Over here. Holy Ghost. Jesus is saying, the Holy Ghost is in me. This is the Holy Ghost. All right? Jesus, this, is, this is what Jesus looked like. This is Jesus. This is the spirit that was in him. Holy Spirit. So his soul was in the Holy Ghost. All right? His soul was in the Holy Ghost. Because remember when he gave up the ghost, he said, into thine hand I commit my spirit. But his soul went into where? Hell. So it was the word of God that was able to divide the soul from the spirit. Are you working with me? So, so now it's, just, it's, just <clears throat> it's the same with us. 
But let's look at it. Let's, look, let's take it bit, bit by bit. This is the makeup of Jesus Christ. He was a man, right? He took on a human body. Is that right? And he had to take on a human body in order to be a kinsman to us. Is that right? He had to satisfy the law of kinsmanship because the law of kinsmanship says in order to be a redeemer, this is the Jewish law, God gave him that law in order to redeem anything in Israel, even property. You can't even redeem property in Israel except you be a Jew. And so Jesus had to take on a human body, and not only that, he had to take on a body of the race that God was dealing with, which was the Jewish race. And see, his mother is the one that gave him that body. And, and, and the, the nationality of a child in Judaism, the nationality is not determined by the father. The nationality is determined by the mother. Hello? So if the mother is Jewish, the child is considered Jewish. If the father is, a, is Jew and the mother is a Gentile, the child is considered a Gentile. Hello? So Jesus, be, be, uh, the body that brought forth Jesus Christ was Jewish, so therefore he inherited that nationality. He was Jewish. Are you hearing me? The flesh was Jewish. Are, are you working with me? So he satisfied the law of kinsmanship. So it was lawful for him to be a redeemer. Not only that, he satisfied the law of kinsmanship for the whole world because he took on a human body. Are you working with me? He took on a human body. Now, this, get, this, this is about to get good. Tighten your seatbelts here. Amen? So now, this is what Jesus looked like. The body, Jesus Christ that we saw walking the earth, the Holy Spirit that was in him, and his soul. Are you working with me? Amen? Are y'all hearing God? All right, I want to, I'm, I'm trying to take my time so, so that we'll get this, this understanding. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect, in the 20, 23rd verse, perfect in one. He says, now I want you to do the same thing for them that you did for me so that they can be made what? Made what? Perfect. Oh, no. no they say you can't be perfect. But it was God's intent from the beginning. Salvation was supposed to make the man perfect. Are you hearing God? So that they may be made perfect in one. Is that right? Is that what it says? Glory to God. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved me as thou has loved and has loved them as thou has loved me. In other words, do the same thing with them that you did with me. And then the world will know that you sent me. See, we thought that Jesus was just talking about us living holy and the world would know. No, 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 no. It was more than us just living holy. He's saying, something's going on with that. Mr. Body, you might need to go take the body over there and fix that. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. He's saying that <clears throat> they have to be exactly as I was. They have to be exactly as I was. So the world will know that you sent me. I got to find other words to explain this. Okay. Before Jesus came, he said, a body thou hast prepared me. We talked last night about the Holy Ghost overshadowing Mary, right? Overshadowed Mary prepared that body for Jesus to come in. Now, what was the difference in this body that Jesus was in and, let's say, the body of a sinner? The difference was that the Holy Spirit had overshadowed it first, and what did it do? It circumcised it, right? In other words, it had to sanctify it. There was no law of sin and death working in Jesus' flesh. The scripture says 
that he, was, he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He didn't come in sinful flesh. His flesh was not, his flesh did not have the law of sin and death in it. Hello. It didn't have evil concupiscence in it. There was no craving for sin working in his members. There was no motions of sin working in his members. Hello? Are you working with God? Amen? So you say, well, well, you know, then what makes him our example? When Jesus walked the earth, those 33 and a half years, that was an example of how we're supposed to be walking now that we have the Holy Ghost. Hello, he was our example for how we are to be now. Not how we were before, but how we are now. Because in our body is no evil concupiscence. Come on, are you working with me? And I'm going to prove that to you in just a second. All right, do we see Jesus? All right. Now, Jesus, you can come have a seat, I think. Let's try to, try to show this. Just go, let's go another route here. Now watch this. <coughs> we talked about the soul crying out <coughs> for salvation. The soul crying out. Soul in the body, but the soul was crying out, save me, save me. I am tired. I don't want to go to hell. See, some people don't believe in heaven and hell, but it's real. Believe me, it's real. Your conscience tell you it's real. You know, you may, not, you may say you don't believe in it, but you're alive. Your conscience done told you there's a heaven and a hell because the conscience is the knower. Come on, somebody. Amen. You believe. You know it's a heaven and hell. Glory to God. Because that conscience is the one that knows God. That conscience is the one that remembers who made him. Hello, but he's so weak, he's so, he's held captive under the captivity of sin till he's too weak to be what, to, to, to choose righteousness and override that spirit of iniquity that was living in. That's the one we forgot to make, the spirit of iniquity. Amen. Um, so there was a spirit of iniquity living inside of this. Now, look at this man. This is the soul and spirit, but look, look, look where he is. He's in the, in the body, right? So this is what it means by being in the flesh. He's in the flesh. Is that right? Now, in order for this body to live, this soul got to stay in it. In order for the soul to be alive and express itself, he needs a body. Right? He can't hang around here without a body. If, he, if, he, if that body dies, he's going into eternity. He's going to heaven or hell, one or the other. Is that right? He's going to leave here. Hello, he's not going to rock around here talking about you see your mama, your, she's a ghost and all that, walking around. Hallelujah. No, that, that's not her. That's a familiar spirit. Glory to God. No, that's not your mama. If, amen. She's in eternity. Hello. Just because you have a vision of her, you have a dream of her, that don't mean she's hanging around here. Hello. She's wherever it was that her soul determined, was determined to go. All right. So now. This soul and spirit is in the flesh. That's a natural man. That's a natural man. Now, when this soul cries out for salvation, we learned this last night, it cries out for salvation. So who, how does it get saved? Holy Ghost over here. So God now, <coughs> Jesus, take this, this soul and put it over here in the Holy Ghost. That man's soul now is in the Holy Ghost and it's preserved, right? It's preserved in the Holy Ghost. So what happens to the body? The body dies. He dead. So the body is dead. Now watch this. This is where the rubber meets the road right here. And this is what destroys a bunch of false doctrines right here. 
the body is dead because the soul has been taken out of it. Because now, the Bible says as many of us as are baptized into Christ were baptized into his what? His death, all right? We talked about that last night. We went through that. Now, this is what I want you to see. Help me, Holy Ghost. Let me give you the scripture. <clears throat> St. John 17 and 1 and 2. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. Okay, now glorify me so that I can glorify you. Listen to this prayer now. Glorify me. What is it? Who's saying? Okay. Glorify who? Is this Jesus praying? He's saying glorify who? Me. Himself. Right? Glorify me so that I can glorify you. Come on now, watch this now. Are you, are you ministers getting this? Glorify me. Now he's on the earth, right? But he's praying a prophetic prayer. He's praying as if he's already been crucified and resurrected. Are, are you hearing me? He's praying as if he's already been crucified and resurrected. So he says, Father, glorify me so that I can glorify you. Is that what he just said? All right, let's see. How is he going to do that? Read. He's going to tell you how. As thou hast given me, as, as thou hast given him power over all flesh. And you have gave, you gave me, Jesus, power over all flesh. What has that got to do with God glorifying him? What has that got to do with the cost of eggs? Huh? Listen to him. Glorify me so that I can glorify you. How? Because you have given me power over all flesh. Okay, well, he's God. Jesus, Jesus is... God, so he got power over everything. But that's not what this is talking about. Follow me here, Bishop. Glorify me so that I can glorify you because you have given me power over all flesh. Come on, young man. Come on, come on, come on. Come, come. Both of you, both of you. Come on, come on. You gave me power over all flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lay down. Dead bodies, dead bodies. <laughs> Y'all want to be saved too. Amen. All of them dead. These, all these people want to be saved. All these people want to be saved. You got no slacks? Come on. You? Come on, evangelist. Come on. Come on. Amen. Slide over, fellas. She want to be saved, too. <laughs> All these people crying out for salvation. This man over here. Oh, him. He's not the only one. <coughs> Back over my face. He's not the only one want to be saved. All of them want to be saved. All these people want to be saved. This is what Jesus is saying. You have given me power over all flesh. You give me power over all flesh. Okay. This is what this means. This is what this is re relative to. See, all these people want salvation? Their souls, 
This is the process. I'm slowing it down. This is spiritual slow motion camera. Their souls have been taken out of the flesh. Their soul has been placed in the Holy Ghost. And their body is dead. Right? Their body is dead. So now, glorify me so that I can glorify you. Because you have given me power over all flesh. All right. We just established last night that the glory that Jesus had with the Father before the world was, was that he was an eternal spirit. Right? Glory to God. When he walked down on this earth for, for 33 years, he was confined to a body. But he said, now give me the glory I had with you before the world was. So that glory meant that he was going back, amen, to, be, to, to being in the form that he was, that eternal spirit that he was. And that eternal spirit is omnipresent. Are you, that means it's everywhere. It can be everywhere at all times. Are y'all working with me? So he's saying now, okay, these people want to be saved, and I'm going to, Father, glorify me. Watch this thing. Watch this, this salvation thing. Now watch this here. Watch this. All these people's souls have been taken out and put in the Holy Ghost. Right? They've been taken out and put in the Holy Ghost. So Jesus is saying he's going to raise up by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going to raise. Th this, is what, this is what happens. Jesus is going to get back in that body that used to belong to him, to Daniel. But Jesus is going to get in it in the form of the Holy Ghost. And then it becomes what? The body of Christ. Okay? So the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is not going to quicken this body. So now this body has Jesus in it. This body has Jesus in it. Forget about the soul right now. This body got Jesus in it. When this man, when this woman is raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Ghost, <coughs> this body got Jesus in it. When this man is raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Ghost, this body got Jesus in it. Hello? <laughs> Get him up, Holy Ghost. <laughs> now, all of these bodies... Got who in them? Jesus. Who's in all of these bodies? Jesus. So now, what's your name? Dreckett? Dreckett? Siobhan? Shavoy. Shavoy. Ernesto. Ernesto. Daniel. And Daniel. They all have Jesus in the flesh. So, So now, if that's Jesus in the flesh, and it's <clears throat> the body of Christ, then this is Christ, this is Christ, this is Christ, and this is Christ. <coughs> Are you seeing this? Hello? Yeah. So now, watch this. Jesus is in each one of these bodies. The body has become the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hello? The body has become the temple of the Holy Ghost. Is there anything else in there to make it sin? Is there anything else in this flesh? I mean, it's been circumcised. We learned that last night. 
that before Jesus would get in it, <coughs> what did he do? He had to cut away evil concupiscence out of it. <coughs> he got rid of the spirit of iniquity. That's the circumcision of the flesh. Sanctified it. Purged it of all sin. It's still human because it's still flesh. Hello? It's still flesh. But the difference in this human body and the body of a sinner is that this body has been purged and circumcised of the sin. Now watch this here. He didn't just take the sin out. And then all of a sudden, it jumped back in. See, this is what you think. You think God purged it, and then when you sin, sin got back in it. No, 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 no. Go to 1 John. Third chapter. 1 John 3. Eighth verse. He that committeth sin is of the devil. He that commits sin is of the devil. Devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. The devil sinned from the beginning. So all of Adam's children, hmm? Mm -hmm. All of Adam's children were of the devil. Are you hearing God? Well, watch this. Read on. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. But for this purpose now, the Son of God was manifested because the devil sinned from the beginning and he caused all of us to sin. Is that right? He got in us and lived in us and caused all of us to sin. So for that reason, the Son of God was manifested. <clears throat> read, read on. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Wait a minute. The devil sinned from the beginning, got inside of the human race. Are you, are you following me here? He got inside of the human race and caused the whole human race to sin. Huh? And then what was that last line you just read? For this, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested <laughs> that he might destroy the works of the devil. That he might do what? Destroy. He might destroy the works, works of, the, of devil. the devil. What was the works of the devil? Sin. Sin in our flesh. The devil was working the motions of sin in our flesh. Yes. So Jesus was manifested, made known in the flesh so that he could destroy sin in the flesh. Now, this has been taught in error in many, many, for many, many years. Let me show you what this really means. Jesus, come on, Jesus. You just like the Holy Ghost. You, you and him the same. Get in this body. Get in these bodies. Get back there in these bodies. Come on back up here, baby. Jesus. Holy Ghost, whichever one you want to call him, he's in these bodies. And because he's there, Ricky, he destroys the works of the devil. Isn't that what it says? The work that the devil was doing, causing evil concupiscence to work in the body, causing the motions of sin to work in the body, Jesus got in that body so that that couldn't happen anymore. Come on, somebody. He got in there so the devil can't make that happen anymore. The flesh has been circumcised, been cleansed, evil concupiscence cut out of it. Glory to God, the craving for sin is gone. Hello. There's nothing in this body now but Jesus. There's nothing in this body but who? Jesus. Now watch this. Watch this. Read the next verse. Whosoever is born of God. Whoever. Y'all were dead. Dead, dead, dead. Just like the soul 
was resurrected. These dead bodies were resurrected. Is that right? Huh? And so when they were resurrected, they were born again. Because they died. And now they are born just like the soul was regenerated, born again. Now the flesh is born again. That's what Jesus meant when he was talking to Nicodemus. When he said that which is born of the flesh is flesh. We took and threw that out the window and said we don't need that then. We did. We kind of said, okay, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Okay, cool, that's good, it's gone. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. We jumped on that. But he said, wait, 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 hold it. Hold it, Mary Banks. Go back to what I said. He that is born of, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Hello? The flesh was born again, too. Because it died, just like Jesus. The Bible says when, when God raised Jesus from the dead, he said, this day have I begotten thee again. Oh, come on, somebody. Are y'all hearing God? Amen. When he raised us from the dead after the atonement, he says, we've been born again. Hello? That doesn't change the fact that this is flesh. But it died, and it's been resurrected, so it's been born again. Are you working with me? And it had to die so that the body of sin could be what? Destroyed. Once a man is dead, he's under no more penalty. Come on. Once he's dead, he's under no more penalty. Are you hearing God? Amen. So now the body is raised from the dead by the Spirit of God, by Jesus Christ, and now, watch this, though. This body that we thought making up was making us sin. This body that was making us sin. Oh, my God. Read this next line. Whosoever is born of God does what? Does not commit sin. He, uh-oh. He that is born of God doesn't do what? Commit sin. Does not commit sin. So this body... How was this body raised up? Did your soul raise it up? If it was raised up by the soul, it would be a living soul still. We would still be a living soul. But the soul had nothing to do with it. Who raised the flesh back up? Spirit of God. Hello? Jesus raised this body up. Whosoever is born of God he does not commit sin. He doesn't commit sin. Why doesn't he commit sin? Why well, doesn't he commit sin? Why does not the flesh commit sin anymore? For his seed remaineth in him. What seed? You mean this seed here Jesus. remaineth in the flesh? Yes. And the flesh can't sin? Oh, glory. You mean the flesh cannot commit a sin? My Bible say he can't sin. He can't sin. What is this? This is a body with Jesus in it. Just like it was when he walked the earth 2,000 years ago, he's walking in this man's body. He's walking in this man's body. He's walking in this woman's body. He is in the flesh. He cannot sin. Show me. Show me where Jesus living in the flesh, can sin. Show me somewhere in the Bible where Jesus, living in this flesh, can sin. Show me where a body that has Jesus in it can sin. A body, 
a body that has Jesus in it. He said it cannot sin. Why? Because his seed remain in him. He didn't just save us and go back to heaven. No, he, he remained in the flesh. He said, I'm going re- to remain here because now this is my body. This is the body of Christ. This, that body belongs to Jesus now. He's living in this flesh. Do y'all see that? And this flesh, as long as Jesus is living in it, cannot sin. So, you say, well, I don't understand that. Because I know I've sinned since I've been saved. You sure did. You sinned. You committed sin. I committed sin. He didn't. This body didn't. How could it? See, now as your pastor, either we believe the whole Bible or we don't believe none of it. The Bible says he can't sin. Said the flesh can't sin. So what happened? I'll tell you what happened. The Lord told us to be a what? Witness. Didn't he? So that meant that the soul had to come back. But the soul was in the spirit. The soul did not raise this body from the dead like it was in Adam. Come on. And Adam, it was the soul that had this body alive. But now, it's Jesus that's got this body alive. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing God? That's why this body cannot die as long as the Holy Ghost is in it. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost is the spirit of life. Are y'all hearing God? There's no way. That's why Jesus had to give up the ghost. So... How do we sin? What happened with sin, though? (coughs) Well, the scriptures say that body can't sin. But now the soul, the scripture said for the soul, set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. Agree with God and you'll make it in. But when the soul starts peeping into the world, and see some things it wants to experience in this world, guess what it does? It usurps authority over the spirit. And what does it do? Corinthians, is it the sixth chapter? One of those chapters says, is it Corinthians, one of those books, says when a man... Commit fornication? Where is that? Huh? Verse 18. First Corinthians 6, verse 18. What does it say? Flee fornication. Flee fornication. Start at 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Uh-huh. Flee fornication. Uh-huh. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. Every sin you commit is outside the body. But he that committeth fornication but sinneth. But when you commit fornication. Sinneth against his own body. Woo! What? H- huh? So if this man wants to commit fornication. He doesn't want to commit fornication. The soul does not want. The, I'm sorry. The flesh does not want to commit fornication. There's nothing in this flesh that makes it want to sin. It's the soul that decides it wants to experience some of the stuff it used to experience. So the soul usurps authority. Oh, you the soul. I'm sorry. Soul usurps authority. And he begins to create lust in this flesh. Come on, are you hearing God? He thinks his way back into sin. He creates the lust. 
Did not John, James say, if a man is tempted, he's drawn away by his? No devil made him do it this time. He creates his own lust. Was not Satan made perfect? Lucifer was perfect until the day what? Iniquity was found in him. He the one said, I will exalt my throne above that of the most high. That one thought was sin. So when the soul decides, I want to commit fornication, notice what it does. The Bible said, when he joins to a harlot, when, when he joins up with a harlot, he is taking the members of Christ, the body of Christ, and joining it to a harlot. He's taking Christ's body and joining it to a harlot. Is that what it says? He's taking Christ's body. But not only did it say that, he said, but he sinning, the soul is sinning against his own body. So if he's sinning against his body, it means his body wasn't craving no sin. He's working against his own body. His body's saying, I don't, don't blame me. You want to do this thing. Come on, somebody. And what does Jesus do? Jesus is still there. Jesus is, is there saying, you are connecting my temple to a harlot. And that little conscience keep telling us, that still small voice, he keeps telling the soul, don't do this. Don't do this. This is my body. This is mine. It is for the purposes of the gospel. I remain in this flesh to procure more sons. Don't do this. Do the work of the Lord. Obey the Father right here. You can overcome this. You can overcome sin. Think on those things which are lovely, those things which have a good report, those things that are praiseworthy. Huh? Set your affections on things above. Fill your heart with, with, with hymns and songs of, of praise and worship toward God. Come on, think on those things, glory to God, that, that will carry you into the presence of God. Don't do this. Come on, somebody. So when we sin, we're pushing against Christ. We done pushed, we done overrode the Holy Ghost. We grieved him, quenched him, and we'll take his body and take it and do what we want to do with it. And the Lord says, I'm not going to fight you. I'm not a usurper because you got to want this. You got to want to obey me. I'm not going to force you to obey me. You got to want to obey me. I'm not going to make you a robot. If you decide to sin, use my temple for sin like you used to do, then okay, that's your privilege. You want to go to hell, go on, on to hell. But I would advise you to let me, the Holy Ghost, control this flesh. Stay back here and be a witness. Do the works of the Father. Come on, somebody. Don't usurp authority over me and take my body into sin again. Because this body has no desire to sin. Now, Holy Ghost, this body with Jesus in it, these bodies with Jesus in it, with Jesus, this body, Jesus in it, these bodies have Jesus in it. Let's see what the scripture says about these bodies. Read this scripture. You with me, Bishop? You with me, Bishop? <laughs> Look at Ephesians, the second chapter. I want to come back and teach some more of this. Can I come back and teach some more? Yes. Amen.
Um, I'm sorry, Ephesians 2, 15. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, mm -hmm. even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Okay, now wait a minute now. When Jesus gets into these bodies, he said, this is one new man. This body with Jesus in it is the new man. How many born again people in here? Now you can say, I am my body is a new man. My body is the new man. My body is the new man. Doesn't matter whether you're male or female. This body is the new man. Why is it the new man? Because Jesus is in it. It's his body. Now let's prove that. Let's look at the... Fifth chapter of Ephesians. Oh, wait a minute. We can go to the... Uh, yeah, let's look at the fifth chapter of Ephesians. I think it's about the 30th, yeah, 30th verse. For we are members of his body. We are members of what? His body. His body. Of his flesh and of his bones. We are members of his what? Body. His body of his flesh and of his bone. Let's tell you what that means now. That means that Mr. Daniel... Miss Anesta, Mr. Shaboy. 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 And, and him. <laughs> <laughs> they are all members <coughs> of his body. No, 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 no. Not just in the body. That's not what he's saying. Not just in the body of Christ. Because that's where we left it at. That's not what he's saying here. He's saying, they are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. In other words, he's saying, this body is my body. This body is my body. This is my body. This is my body. Jesus is saying, I have made all nationalities in me since this is my bones and my flesh, I've made one new man. One new man. There's no Jamaican Jesus. There's no American Jesus. There's no white Jesus. There's no black Jesus. Come on, somebody. There's no Chinese Jesus. There's no rich Jesus. There's no poor Jesus. Come on. He says, glory to God. It's one new man. One new man. So, preachers, when you say God didn't call a woman to preach, in Christ, there's no, no, no what? No, no. No male or, but all is Christ. All is Christ. There's no gender. Gender was in our flesh before we met Jesus. But now he says all of this flesh belongs to him. Now, last point, hopefully last point I got to make before I go. Remember something we read earlier? that says something we read in the 17th chapter of St. John. He said, you have given me power over all flesh. Isn't that right? Amen. This is why God expects us to live holy. Because Jesus 
is in all of these bodies, is in this flesh. The devil has been evicted. There's no evil concupiscence. There's no motions of sin working in the flesh. Come on, are you working with me? Jesus said, I am in this flesh. I cannot sin. This body will never sin on its own. You got to take it into sin. Come on. Before, our little mind just went on. Our little mind just sat down and thought about sin. But this body now has the mind of Christ in it. It doesn't want to sin. That's why, that's, glory to God, that's why sin doesn't feel good to us. Come on. That's why sin doesn't feel good to the flesh. Even when you think up on sin, you done thought up on lust, you done created the lust, oh, and you're on the phone talking, and you done talk, 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 until you done built up the lust in the flesh, and then when you go to fulfill that lust, even though it's, why do you feel so dirty, so unclean? Because this body does not crave sin anymore. Amen. Come on. That's enough to praise him for right there. Glory to God. How in the world this body can crave sin with Jesus living in it? Jesus said, I have power over all flesh. You've given me power over all flesh. So glorify me so that I can glorify you. Put me back in the body. Put me back in their bodies and I'll glorify you. Put me back in their bodies and I can live. I can show glory to God if they just agree with me. They will walk like I walked. Talk like I talk. Want what I want. Think like I think. They'll take on my mind. Hallelujah. And the world will see me. In their bodies. The world will see. The world will know that you sent me. Because I'm still here. Walking in all these different bodies. Glory to God. I'm walking around here. Sinless. Sinless. He said I got power over all flesh. So that means. There's nothing about this flesh. That wants to sin anymore. He said, because I remain in it. I didn't just save you and go back to heaven. No, I stayed in the flesh. So that you wouldn't use the flesh as an excuse. I'm going to stay in the flesh. Glory to God, I'm going to sanctify this flesh. And I'm going to live in it. It's my temple. And it will never crave sin again. In order for it to get into sin, you got to take it into sin. And when you do sin, it ain't going to feel good. Hallelujah. As long as I'm in it, you're going to feel condemned. Come on and clap your hands and tell him thank you. So the difference, I am a new creature. My body is the new man. And we are one. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a praise for the word tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father. Amen. What a word. What a word. Yeah. Amen. To God be the glory. Come on, give the Lord praise for our Dr. Bankston. Yeah. Hallelujah. Remember, if you want to um, get a, the DVD, we have the World Conference that was. Oh man, I tell you, man. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Yes, um, for those who would like to get the, the old set of World Conference, these are eight DVDs. You can 
speak to Pastor Grace this after service. If you'd like to get the services from Monday until tonight, you can also speak to her. Amen. It's an awesome word tonight. We give God all the praise, all the glory, all the honor for speaking to us tonight again. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you, Father. Remember, for those who live in the Otris area, we worship here again Sunday morning at 10 a.m. You're welcome to come and worship with us. Amen. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank every per that came from Kingston, all our visitors, all our members that stood with us through this week. This was a rich word, a mighty time that we tabernacle with God in this house. Come on, let's God get some praise tonight for this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not, we're not going to keep you much longer, but um, as you know, the bills have to be paid. Amen? Hallelujah. We, you know, I don't know gimmicks to get an offering. I don't know how to tell you to do all this stuff, but what we're going to ask you to do tonight to give towards this conference. Amen? Give towards this tonight. The hair condition bills have to be paid. Amen? Amen. If you're blessed, tell somebody next to you, I'm blessed. Or about you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Us just get ready, get ready, get ready. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you. Apostle, we want to bless God for you. We love you. And we appreciate you so much. God bless you. You are a precious gift to the body of Christ. Amen. And we just, hallelujah. We just pray that God continue to bless you and just to speak through you that it can be a blessing to us. Amen. Hey, hey listen now. A pastor can't dress the way in a man. Now I tell you what. <laughs> she get boy, she have it locked there. I tell you about this. I, I, man, I know some people. I never see somebody get dressed like her. Anything she put on look good, don't it? <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a praise for her. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We bless you. Ushers, ushers, come quickly. Come quickly. Amen. Bless God. We, if you want to give to us this, this time that we're spending here, amen. The Bible said God love a cheerful giver. Amen. So we're going to give cheerfully to the Lord tonight. And return back to your seat after you finish and that we can dismiss rightfully. Uh, life in the Word, gospel band. They look good in their shirt, no you? Big them up, no, big them up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless God for them. Can we stand everywhere, please? Can we, can we just stand as we get ready to worship God and give Him? Amen. Oh, you're, are you ready? Come on. Come on, start coming from anywhere you like to start from there, here, wherever. Hallelujah. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away, I'm born again. More than a conqueror, that's who I am. I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a brand new man. All the things are passed away. All things are passed away. I'm born again. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a brand new man. Oh, I'm, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. All things are passed away. And I'm born, I'm born again. again. More, More than, than a conqueror. conqueror. 
That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Oh, things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. That's who I am. I'm a new. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. All things are passed away. I'm born again. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. That's who I am. I'm a new. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Oh, things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new I'm a brand new man. More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Glenn. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Since we're still in the presence of the Lord, let us keep our hearts in the right place. Father, we just lift you up tonight and we give you thanks. We give you glory just for your word, O oh God. For enriching us with your presence, O oh Father. For just coming to visit us, O oh God, to just explain yourself to us, O oh God. To just teach us, Father, who we are, O oh God. And that, Lord, you have saved us, you have cleansed us, you have washed us. So we can walk in righteousness and holiness, contrary to what the world is saying, O oh God. We know who we are, Father. We are new creatures, O oh God. New creation, O oh Father. We are a brand new man, O oh Father. And God, tonight we are committing ourselves, Father, to walk as who we are, your sons, O oh God, full of the Holy Spirit, O oh Father. We honor you tonight, O oh God. And we say, Father, we are going to walk as you have ordained for us to walk, O oh God. Lord, we lift up the offering to you tonight, O oh God. And we say, Father, we thank you and we appreciate what your people have given to you, O oh God. And we just ask you, Lord, to just bless the offering, O oh Father. Bless it to your service, O oh God. Bless those hearts that gave, O oh God. And bless those who wanted to give, Father, but just didn't have it to give to you tonight, O oh God. We just thank you, Lord, for our apostle, O oh Father. For a heart that is given over to you, O oh God. A heart that is hearing from you, O oh Father. And a heart that is willing to say what you tell her to say, O oh God. We thank you for our bishop tonight, O oh God. The pastor of this house, O oh God. And we just Father, ask you, Lord, to just continue to bless him, O oh Father. As he continues to give himself over to you. As he continues to be an example 
to his people, O God. We honor you tonight and we bless you, Lord, and we say, have your way in our hearts, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They said all good things have to come to an end. This is not coming to an end, it continues. Amen. Amen. So let's continue to live holy. Let's continue to walk uprightly before the Father with love. God bless you. God keep you tonight. Amen. Amen. On your journey, wherever you're going, I pray the peace of God, the protection of God upon you tonight. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's just raise your hand before him. Father, we bless you. We honor you tonight, Lord God. We give you glory. We give you praise and honor, Father. It's a privilege to be heard from you tonight again, Father. We bless you. We thank you for speaking to our heart tonight again, God. We pray you will continue to bless and speak through and manifest yourself through the vessel that you're using now in the hurt, Father God, our apostle, Dr. Mary Banks, Lord. Continue to use her, Father God. Continue to use her for your glory and to enhance your kingdom, Father, in the name of Jesus. And as she procure sons here, Lord God, across this island, help us, Lord God, that we'll light the fire in different parts of the highland father god and run with this word that others will come to know you and to see you as you hear i am lifted up father we bless you now lord as those who are going to kinston those who are going to different parts st mary wherever they're going father i pray sojourn in mercy Cover them, Lord God. Keep them from falling asleep around the steering wheel, Lord God. The other driver that's coming in the next direction, we pray, God, you'll steer them away, Lord God. Let no accident, let nothing befall us tonight. But let's get on where we can give you glory tomorrow again, Father God. We praise you for taking us home safely now. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch it now. Let it go. I found a new life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with you, my friend? Tell them that I am saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized. Jesus on my mind. I found a new life. I found a new life. I found a new life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with you, my friend? Tell them that you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized. Jesus on my mind. I found a new life. I found a new life. I found a new life. If anybody asks you, What's the matter with you, my friend? Tell them that you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized. Jesus on my mind, I found a new life. I found a new life. I found a new life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with you, my friend? Tell them that you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, Jesus.